And welcome to another Folded Lab Report. I am BKEP here at the Institute for Protein Design. In this video, we want to look back at the year that just closed and highlight some of the many ways that Foldit has gotten better. From Foldit gameplay to a new website to a host of new scientific puzzles, Foldit has never been more capable. First, let's talk about some of the major changes we've made to Foldit gameplay. We added several new tools to the game last year that are all powered by artificial intelligence. The neural net objective boosts your score based on AlphaFold, a neural net from DeepMind that predicts protein structure based on an amino acid sequence. The neural net objective rewards designs that AlphaFold can predict with high confidence, and it can also reveal parts of your protein that contrast with the AlphaFold prediction. Now, when it comes to speeding up the game with AI, there is no better example than the neural net mutate tool. Pressing this new button in the game unleashes a powerful machine learning algorithm that is trained to make mutations that are likely to improve protein folding. The new mutate tool is not only way faster, it does a better job too. This one still blows me away. In addition to these AI tools, which should help improve the quality of folded designs, We've also added some features which should expand the kinds of scientific problems we can tackle in Foldit. The new Trim tool lets us divide and conquer large proteins that are normally too big for Foldit. Foldit slows down to a crawl if you try to load in large proteins with more than a couple hundred residues. The problem is that most natural proteins are much bigger than this. Now, when faced with a large protein, you can use the Trim tool to narrow your focus and fold just one region of the protein at a time. Then, seamlessly splice the pieces back together to get a complete model of the protein. The trim tool is a clever way to let Foldit players work on bigger, badder problems. The compound library tool has opened up Foldit to the world of small molecule screening. When it comes to making small molecule medicines, one serious issue is the difficulty of making small molecule compounds in the lab. With access to professional grade chemical libraries, you can now have confidence that the small molecules you design in Foldit can be easily produced for lab testing. Foldit players worked on some important biological problems this year. We've talked before about how the monkeypox virus is especially challenging for researchers. The virus contains many more unique proteins than, say, coronavirus, and we don't know what all of those proteins do. And without solved structures of those proteins, we don't know what they look like or how to target them. Thanks to algorithms like AlphaFold, however, we can now predict the structure of monkeypox proteins and design drugs against those predictions. Since August, Foldit players have been doing just that, designing proteins that can bind to the monkeypox H3 protein and potentially block viral infection. And that's not all. In 2022, Foldit players designed proteins to bind important targets in the body, including CD22, CD47, TI2, the TGF receptor, and BMPR. This was also a big year for small molecule design. We ran 20 small molecule design puzzles, starting with a couple of PROTAC targets and culminating in the CASH target, the SARS-CoV-2 helicase protein. Folded players also rebuilt 17 solved protein structures, improving their fit to electron density data. Last fall, we launched a brand new website for Foldit. It has a sleeker look and should do a better job handling all of the recipes and solutions that Foldit players produce. The website also has an awesome new feature that lets you view 3D proteins directly in the browser. We think this is really going to help Foldit players discuss and share solutions with one another. Check it out at fold.it if you haven't already. Another highlight from 2022 was our video series taking you inside the lab. We titled this series From DNA to Protein because it's meant to show you what happens after a folded puzzle closes. If you want to see how a piece of synthetic DNA lets us make a tube of pure protein and finally a solved crystal structure, I recommend watching this three-part series. Link in the description. We had a lot of fun filming and producing these videos, so if this is something you'd like to see more of on this channel, let us know in the comments. Overall, we are super proud of all the improvements we've made to Foldit over the past year. We hope that you've enjoyed playing it as much as we've enjoyed making it. It takes a skilled team to build and maintain a unique project like this. I'm just the one on camera. I want to give a special shout out to all the Foldit developers who made and implemented these changes this past year. I'd also like to take this opportunity and ask you to share feedback with us. What are the changes that you'd like to see in Foldit? The request we get most often is to make Foldit into a mobile game. 
Unfortunately, that's not possible right now for a couple of different reasons, but we'll keep an eye on it. If there's stuff you'd like us to include or cut from future lab reports, drop a comment below. I promise we read all of them. And that brings us to this month's design of the month. Today we have a FMN ligand binder design by S.P. Vincent. This is from puzzle 2231. Uh, if we look at this right in the browser here, we can see that it looks like S.P. Vincent has stuck with the starting fold and put a new sequence on it and made some small changes to the backbone I see. Uh, the main thing I'm looking for on this FMN ligand is H bonds to these red oxygen atoms sprinkled throughout. We need to make sure that all of these polar red oxygens either make hydrogen, hydrogen bonds with the protein or can make hydrogen bonds with water surrounding the protein. And if we look at this and fold it, I like to view all of these proteins with the protein design default view. So we see all of the polar atoms and their hydrogen bonds. Um, and we do see, in fact, that S.P. Venson is making all of the requisite hydrogen bonds. This particular tyrosine is not pointed directly at the oxygen, but that might be okay. And I do like this glutamine over here, which spans, looks like a little hydrogen bond network between the ligand and the protein backbone. Um, so all of those polar atoms are satisfied. And also on this uh, hydroxyl tail, we have a couple of hydrogen bonds um, that are satisfying these buried polar atoms. These last oxygens on the end of the small molecule look okay to me. I think solvent can get in there and make hydrogen bonds to all of these uh, atoms on the tail end of this molecule. So this looks great. I think S.P. Vincent has done a great job satisfying all of the polar molecules, all of the polar atoms, sorry, on the ligand molecule. Um, overall, this fold looks very nice. We see a strong hydrophobic core with lots of hydrophobic residues on the interior, which should help the protein fold up. Um, and all of these hydrophobic contacts, where orange side chains are contacting the ligand, those should make for very good tight binding of the ligand. Um, the one problem with this design is that the alpha fold confidence of this sequence is not very high. Alpha fold does not predict that the sequence will fold into this structure with a very high confidence. Um, so I wonder if we could make some mutations, maybe with the neural net mutate tool that would improve the alpha fold confidence of this sequence of this design without messing up too much of S.P. Vincent's excellent binding site here. As a reminder, we love to see Share with Scientist solutions from all players. We very much encourage you to share your favorite solutions with us, regardless of how they rank on the Foldit leaderboards. That's it for this month. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for playing. We'll see you next time.